Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, of course, I thought that I would release a little news and talk about overall the news of this new fight, the rematch that is now going to be instilled, I believe, now on the date of October 15th. And of course, there really wasn't any recent news up until yesterday that this fight was 100% going to happen. But for those of us, of course, that did pay attention, we knew that there was a possibility because there was a rematch clause. And of course, the fight that I am talking about is the rematch for the complete undisputed crown of the Devin Haney versus George Cambosis Jr. fight. And of course, for those of us that did watch that first fight, I believe it took place in Australia on ESPN+. Plus. The fight, in my opinion, was pretty much a domination. It pretty much was a boxing lesson from that of Devin Haney. I thought that he performed very, very decently well. As I've already said in the past, I did predict Devin Haney to win that fight. And the reason why I predicted him to win that fight is because I just did not think that George Cambosis, in my opinion, had the right skill set, in my view, to beat that of a Devin Haney. And the reason why I say that is because George Cambosis, and I've already said this a multitude of times, I'm not really sure if George Cambosis is that elite of a fighter. In my opinion, even though he got the very, very good win over Tiafima Lopez, I think that Tiafima Lopez, at his best, is usually going to be a couple of levels above that of a George Cambosis. The Tiafima Lopez that I seen in his last fight against Pedro Campa, even though some people maybe were not full on impressed with his last performance, in my view, that version of Tiafima Lopez is better than any version of George Cambosis that I have ever personally seen. In my view, and I do not believe that I'm the only one that thinks this, even some of the ones that went a little bit against Tiafima Lopez, because of course he was a little bit, you know, um, what's the word overall that I want to use? He did not seem to want to give Devin Haney a shot, or he seemed a little bit too big for his britches, smelling in his own fumes a little bit too much, letting his head get a little bit too big for his own good. You know, even some of those channels will tell you that more than likely in their view, that Tiafima Lopez, that he fought a very, very poor fight in that fight. And don't get me wrong, maybe George Cambosis was just able to expose some of the negative things or some of the holes that Tiafima Lopez might have in his style. But in my opinion, Tiafima Lopez, at his absolute best, he is always going to be a better boxer than what that of a George Cambosis would be. I think the reason why George Cambosis beat that of a Tiafima Lopez in the first place is because I think that Tiafima Lopez overall was not fighting his best fight. I do not think that he believed that George Cambosis was going to be that big of a challenge, at least as hard as what he was. And on top of that, the styles that they had, they really did mirror and mimic each other. And, you know, let's not get it twisted. George Cambosis did come to lay it down. He did overall come to fight. So, you know, no doubt about it, George Cambosis deserves a certain amount of credit. But what George Cambosis reminds me of, you know, in my opinion, he reminds me of another Andrew Ruiz Jr., or another Buster Douglas, or another Kelly Pavlik. A fighter that, yes, he's a very decent fighter, but at the end of the day, no one truly expected him to get there. And when he finally did get to that spot, no one really expected him to be there for long. It just, it is what it is. And the main reason why he probably got those belts is either A, because when it comes down to what that type of style was just able to reveal a certain amount of the holes in that style overall that that fighter mainly had or b when it came down to it they fought a fighter that did not take them all that seriously and that's what i think about george cambosis i think that he was i'm not going to say completely lucky to beat tfima lopez because at the end of the day he did the work that he needed to but if they were to have a rematch let's say at 140 pounds do i believe that george cambosis would beat tfima lopez in a rematch more than likely no but you never know but I believe that George Cambosis in this rematch, in my opinion, do I believe that it will change? Do I believe that George Cambosis will beat Devin Haney in a rematch? Not likely. At least that is my personal opinion of the fight. It just is what it is. I think that George Cambosis and Devin Haney, just like Tiafima Lopez and George Cambosis, when they fought, they have certain similarities and their styles in certain ways do clash because they are, in my opinion, somewhat mirroring each other. I think that both fighters prefer at least to move in and out of range Maybe sometimes to be on the back foot and outbox and outcounter their opponents. T. Fima Lopez and George Cambosis are very, very similar in their styles. But I think the reason why George Cambosis was able to beat Tio was because I don't think that T. Fima Lopez expected him to be quite the challenge that he was. And on top of that, I think T. Fima Lopez, overall coming off of that Vasily Lomachenko win, 
I think that his head got a little bit too big for overall his own good. Sometimes when someone, especially very early on in their career, you know, when they get to a very profound level, sometimes it can actually affect them negatively, almost kind of like a rich, spoiled kid when it comes down to it. Because if you get something too early when it comes down, then you may not have to go through certain adversities. Or when you finally do go through that adversity, because you already think that you've been through it all and your head might get a little bit too big for your shoulders, you might end up costing yourself over a little bit later on down the line. My father actually sent me a quote that would fit that very well to where it said a stumble might actually prevent a fall. And what that means is that sometimes when you're exposed to adversity a little bit later on, it may prevent certain traumatic things from happening to us a little bit later on because we've already dealt with that adversity. So Tifima Lopez, when his head was already too big for his shoulders, when it came down to it, and he was already given so much so early on, when it came down to it, he did not believe that George Cambosis was going to be the threat that he actually was. And in my opinion, it cost him a fight. That's my view of it. But that was then, this is now. The question is, will George Cambosis be able to beat that of a Devin Haney? And why, in my opinion, did Devin Haney beat George Cambosis so thoroughly in that of the first fight? Well, the reason why I said that Devin Haney, in my view, just like I said with the Oscar Valdez and Shakur Stevenson match, the reason why I predicted Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney to win those matches is not only because I believed that both of those guys probably had the better all-around ability, but I did not think that either Oscar Valdez nor George Cambosis were going to approach the fight in that of the correct way. Because George Cambosis and Mr. Oscar Valdez, in order to beat the type of style of a Shakur Stevenson, or in order to beat the style of that of a Devin Haney, in my opinion, because they do prefer mainly to either A, box in the middle of the ring, but mainly may, you know, maybe box on the back foot, especially that of a Devin Haney. Because Devin Haney, I don't think is quite as skilled as what a Shakur Stevenson is. He can be hurt a little bit, and sometimes he is a little bit too defensively irresponsible for his own good. But none of those flaws are really going to get exposed if you try to outbox Devin Haney in the middle of the ring when he is the faster probably the slightly slicker fighter than you. His feet are quicker when it comes down to it all in all. And he's just all around the faster fighter than you. It just is what it is. He's bigger than you. He's a little bit lengthier than you. He's taller than you. And he may even weigh a little bit more than you. So the question is, why the hell would you want to try to outbox Devin Haney in the middle of the ring? Even certain fighters like a Javante Tank Davis and a Vasily Lomachenko. In my opinion, there are certain things that those two fighters can do that Devin Haney overall may not be able to do. In my opinion, those fighters debatably are a little bit more defensively responsible or all around more talented than what a Devin Haney is, at least debatably. And not everyone is going to agree with my opinion there, but it just is what it is. However, if they were just going to poke and prod at Devin Haney the whole entire time and just try to outbox him from the middle of the ring, it may not work. Now, sometimes there are certain boxers that are so special to where even overall, if they do fight larger opponents, They can box in the middle of the ring because they're just that great of an athlete. Or on top of that, they're just that, you know, that skilled and that intelligent as a boxer. Certain boxers like a Floyd Mayer the Jr. Or certain boxers, as you know, like a Saul Canelo Alvarez. But that's not going to work every single time. And we've recently seen that overall with Canelo Alvarez against Demetri Bevo. And George Cambosis, in my opinion, he's going to have to do the same thing as what I advised Oscar Valdez to do overall in the match against Shakur Stevenson. He's going to have to do somewhat of the same thing in which a lot of people advised Anthony Joshua to do. And what he's going to have to do against Devin Haney in the rematch is that he's going to have to make it super duper uncomfortable for him because he cannot outbox Devin Haney in my opinion because George Cambosis, even though he doesn't have bad boxing ability and even though Devin Haney may have certain holes in his game overall that may get, I don't want to say exposed because Devin Haney, I don't want to make it sound like I'm shitting on him or anything because he is a very decent boxer, but I do think that maybe once he fights at 140 pounds, that maybe overall that we'll see how truly great he is if overall he does become a champion there as well, which is possible. He is a very decent fighter, but I do see certain holes, in my opinion, that could be exposed, like what I seen in the Jojo Diaz fight when it came down to and a couple other ones. But George Cambosis just does not have that type of style. You know, in the first fight, he completely tried to out counter and outbox out of a Devin Haney, and that's a very bad mistake. You know, if you're in the ring with Muhammad Ali, you can't try to always out counter and outspeed Muhammad Ali. What you have to do overall when it comes down to it is that you have to basically try to take your time and overall you have to try to get in there and make it very, very uncomfortable. That's what Joe Frazier did. 
all right, when it came down to it. And I believe to a degree that's also what Mr. Ken Norton did. Now, there are going to be certain fighters that maybe they are able to outbox that guy, but you're not able to. And certain fighters and certain people sometimes have to know their limitations or they have to realize that outboxing an opponent or outcountering this guy is not always the best thing to do. You know, as certain people would say, sometimes overall, you know, you have to box the fighter and you have to fight the boxer. All right. You have to know somewhat of your limitations and certain fighters, even the greatest of fighters, sometimes will even have to fight certain boxers because they may have certain height advantages or they may have certain size advantages or who knows, they may just be that tricky. When Sugar Ray Leonard fought Tommy Hearns in that first fight, I don't think that Tommy Hearns, in my view, was probably all around quite the boxer of a Sugar Ray Leonard. But what Sugar Ray Leonard had to do in that first fight was that eventually he had to get in the range with Tommy Hearns because Tommy Hearns had a significant reach advantage and size advantage over a Sugar Ray Leonard. And on top of that, they both were decently talented athletes. So Sugar Ray Leonard had to get inside. He had to overall make up the difference. Is George Cambos is going to do that against Devin Haney? I'm not quite so sure, but in my view, he really doesn't have a choice. It's going to be very, very interesting. Hopefully for Mr. George Cambosis Jr., at least for his corner, when it comes out, and if you're rooting for a George Cambosis, hopefully overall he makes this fight a little bit more difficult for that of a Devin Haney, or hopefully he comes out with a different game plan. Because if he thinks that he's overall just going to go in the middle of the ring and outbox out of a Devin Haney, he is very sorely mistaken. And it's the same thing that I said about an Oscar Valdez and a Shakur Stevenson. Those fighters are faster than you, they're lengthier than you, and they have just as much boxing ability as you, if not a little bit more, some would even say way more. So it just is what it is. At the end of the day, you have to make that fight very, very difficult. You have to go on the inside, all right? And that's what a lot of fighters try to do. Certain people overall say that it may be because certain fighters just don't have enough grit or they're not willing to go for it. I wouldn't say that for certain fighters. Now, there are examples of certain fighters that maybe all in all, they may not have as much dog in them or as much grit to where they will crumble once the pressure gets on. Certain fighters like a Zab Judah or an Adrian Broner or even a Lucas Matisse, when he got in some of his bigger fights to where once the opponent did find a certain adjustment against them, they couldn't really find a way to fight back. But most championship caliber fighters, in my opinion, even beat, you know, uh, class, you know, caliber champions are not usually like that. They'll usually try to give it a very decent fight. It's just that when it comes to George Cambosis, you know, because we could say the same thing with George Cambosis. There was a lot of people that were trying to say about Anthony Joshua recently that he didn't have enough dog in him and that he didn't have enough grit. Well, in my opinion, it wasn't really about dog and grit. It was just that Anthony Joshua really didn't have the boxing IQ to realize that in order to beat Usyk, he had to approach that fight a little bit differently. In Anthony Joshua's mind, I think he did everything that he thought he could do. You know, he, he put on the best fight that he possibly could, but I don't think that it was the right approach. George Cambosis, in his mind, probably for the first fight, he probably thought that he could do everything that he could do. But in my opinion, George needed to make it a scuffle. Don't try to outbox Devin Haney in the middle of the ring. He's bigger than you. He's lengthier than you. And he has just as much boxing ability than you, if not even a little bit more. So outboxing him in the middle of the ring is not going to work. It just is what it is. That would be like Deontay Wilder trying to outbox Tyson Fury in the middle of the ring or trying to outbox him. That's not going to work. Okay, it just is what it is. Now, in my opinion, George Kembosis has more boxing ability probably than what a Wilder did. But at the end of the day, this is a different type of fight. So it just is what it is. But it's going to be very interesting to see what a George Kembosis does overall. I don't think that the fight is going to end up that much differently. Because in my opinion, I don't think George Kambosis, in my view, was ever truly an A-grade fighter. Or at least a definitive A-grade fighter. I may give him the grade of A-, minus, but nothing really above that. Once again, in my opinion, he's in that same caliber as the man overall who beat the man, but was never expected to stay at the top forever. <laughs> kind of like a Buster Douglas, an Andrew Ruiz Jr., a Kelly Pavlik, yada, yada, yada. That's the class of fighter, in my view, that George Kambosis is in. Because if we're really going to be truthful about Mr. George Cambosis Jr., how many of us truly believe that he would beat Tifima Lopez in a rematch or Devin Haney in a rematch? Or how many, must, how many of us would believe that he would beat a Ryan Garcia or a Vasily Lomachenko or overall, you know, someone like a Javante Tang Davis, a Shakur Stevenson? I'm not sure if he would beat any of those fighters. It just is what it is. I think that he's a very decent fighter. I think he's got a decent skill set. I just don't think that he has a great skill set. So it just is what it is. Uh, but anyways, that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the rematch. And that's probably about it for today. But I'll talk to you all later.